Hey guys, Josh from Solution Based. We're going to talk about another sort of what type of system do I have. Um, this happens to be a toe kick heater. Um, this one is just for a gym and a basement. So it's set up in a way where you can kind of see the components better. And that's why I'm going to cover this one. Um, what this normally does is it goes underneath of a cabinet in the kitchen or a laundry room or an ancillary space where you need heating and you don't have it. Um, there are electric versions of this. Um, they're a little bit expensive to run, but they are an alternative when you really need a little space that just needs a little bit of heat. You don't want to do that uh, for a space that you're going to run all the time. That'll get expensive. Uh, resistance heating is always one of the most expensive ways to heat something. This one runs on a boiler. Um, and what you end up here with is um, in a space that's especially um, that is hard to get a radiator or a piece of baseboard like kitchens and laundry rooms, um, you, this gives you the ability to kind of hide it and make it work in the space that you already have. Because let's face it, in kitchens, who wants to look at the radiator or the baseboard, first of all? And two, who wants to give up? That's such valuable square footage. Nobody wants to give it up. So these are super effective for preserving design factors and for preserving square footage in a space that really everybody's trying to squeak every last square foot out of their kitchen. Um, the problem with these systems, the problem with these systems is that it typically is kitchen designers, okay, and the plumbers and heating professionals that they employ. Um, they don't understand the system that um, the, they're attaching these to, and they don't understand how these things affect those systems. And what you end up with, in 60% of cases, I walk in and the toe kicks aren't working correctly. And the reason why that is, is because everybody's trying to get the kitchen in under budget. And to do this properly takes the right amount of effort. It almost always requires its own zone. So whether you be in a big old stone house like we have here in Southeast Pennsylvania with big old mains that are coming through the house from a boiler, um, and you try to tie into that, and think that that's gonna work, and I see it all the time. I have a client right now that's going through, just got their kitchen done, toe kick not working, because the, the uh, heating professional and the kitchen designer didn't understand that you just can't tie a three-quarter pipe into a three-inch main and think that that water's ever gonna to wanna to go up there. It's always gonna take the path of least resistance, go right by your toe kick, and it's never gonna work. So what they try to do is just throw this on the lines and think that it's gonna heat the same way. The other problem is we have a radiator system out there working on a thermostat and then a fan coil system operating here, which is essentially what this is, a tiny little fan coil. Um, they heat at different rates. So by the time the thermostat is shutting off for the radiator system out there, this could have over or underperformed at that point, which is why you, if you want this to work correctly, will always put this on its own zone with its own thermostat inside the kitchen. And I know that that has an expense related to it, but think about kitchen usage. One, sometimes your kitchen is gonna be broiling hot because you're running the oven and you're cooking and you're doing this and all that stuff. And the thermostat, if you put it on its own zone, is gonna to respond to that outside input because it's only for the space that it's in, okay? So you start cooking and you just start getting everything going, the kitchen's 74 degrees, the thermostat's gonna say, I don't need to come on. Why? Because it's only for your kitchen toe kicks. Um, and that really is helpful because otherwise your heat's gonna be running and your kitchen is, is, is cooking, you know, you got 15 pots going, you got the oven on, it's, it's roasting in there, and having your own zone in your kitchen will eliminate all of that. It also then responds, because there's such a variable load in the kitchen, when everything is turned off and it's first thing in the morning and you're coming in for your cup of coffee and you're in your stocking feet and it's freezing in there on the floor because the rest of the house is running on a different load capacity, it allows your kitchen where you spend so much time to be the temperature that you're looking for it to be. And it's doing it under a wide variety of load conditions. So I can't tell you guys enough uh, make sure you ask some pertinent questions about the piping system that your um, installer is going to employ on this. That's how they're going to connect it. If you're connecting to a copper pin thin baseboard system, there are some real big mistakes. Just like I explained to you with the three inch mains, there are some real big mistakes you can make attaching this to a copper pin baseboard system that will shut the whole rest of the system down. There's some really good ways to connect this, but in both of those cases, its own zone is almost 
uh, a requirement. Sometimes on copper pin baseboard, because it's a more similar type of heating, I can get away with doing without it, or I'll tell a client, hey, we'll try it and see if you like it, and then we can add the zone as needed. Um, but you really want to, don't let this just go under the radar. If you're paying for one of these, you want to ask some real pertinent questions. You want to make sure that the end, you want to talk to the installer and say, tell me how you're going to make this thing work properly. And you're going to want to make sure to get answers that make you confident that this person isn't just throwing this thing in, that they understand. They should be able to, the things that I just came right out with, I've done, you know, a hundred of these. So you really want this to, the person to understand them well because they're easily misapplied. So thanks guys.